offense. And sh salutations. Have no fear, we mean you no harm. No harm, no harm, no harm, no harm. No harm. The being sniffs the air in your direction and licks his lips. He moves a couple of paces towards you, his eyes hungry and entranced. He abruptly slaps himself in the face and halts his advance. My manners. Master would not be pleased. He awaits you west of here. He will not harm you. Others may. A servant. A loyal servant. He wrings his hands as he answers you. Rings them bloody. Loyal and hungry. Go now. Save your questions from Master. Spare me your presence. He doesn't respond at first. Instead, he stares, consuming you with his eyes. He bites his frayed lower lip, drawing blood. Master is master. He wants you to go to him, west of here. He barely seems to notice your repeated question at first. His eyes are dark pools in which your reflection is drowning. You are so delicious. Please, go west. My master awaits. Sweet sir. Handsome sir. Seek out our master. He wants you. Wants you. She gives you a coy little smile. Her mouth is crowded with dozens of tiny, sharp teeth. Shreds of rotten flesh are lodged between them. The hulking brute recoils slightly from you and gestures towards deeper in the island. My master has use for you. Make haste, if you please. Tell if he's to be trusted. He has faith in them, darling. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you that. True. I'm in deep, deep. You want to buy something or not? No. Ah, there you are. And with just the little demonic host I've been looking for. You don't mind if I have a word with Maslosa, do you? I was just curious about the progress of your little hunt. I met your old buddy, Jahan, if that's what you mean. I don't have buddies. I have associates. So, did he help you with the, uh, <clears throat> matter at hand? He's putting me through my paces. I have a few more hoops to jump through before he'll help me. Nothing in life is free, I suppose. Make sure you do jump them, though, sir. You won't be sorry. Shh. Dark words should not sully me. You! You are here to work! Are you also here to trade? I have much to show. I trade, you have coin. I have wares, nothing else matters. You like your nose? Then do not stick it where it's not welcome. We are where we are meant to be. We will be told when we are meant to be somewhere else. <laughs> Your friend wanted a new deal. Wanted to renegotiate terms. We have a wager. Some say she succeeds. Some say not. What say you? Good. 
Tell me, how do you bet? For the Half-Blood or against? She made a deal with our master, but her reward, her obligation, strictly confidential. But the advocate is quick to remind her, the master does not make deals lightly. The master does not break them. Good. Now, see what happens. Until then, do you wish to trade? Look. Do not touch, not until you fatten my purse. See you again, bad. The lizard's eyes are dark as polished coal, void of all light. A faint frost seems to cover the cracked and broken scales around his mouth. You have a reputation for both malfeasance and chaos. Imagine my surprise when it took you so long to find your way here. I see the miasma surrounding our islet certainly did not hinder you. Well, here you stand. In the flesh, so to speak. And a finer collection of corpusculae I never have seen. I trust you are not opposed to a mutually beneficial accord between civil and gentle persons. Likewise, I am sure. But I am not here to bandy niceties. Our situation is somewhat less than ideal. I am here at the behest of my master to offer you a simple exchange. An offer of aid for the promise of aid the epitome of civil reciprocity. You and he possess a common foe. The power behind the Void Woken has made our lives hell, so to speak, since the Divine Order unleashed Death Fog against the Black Ring and those darling woodland creatures. And as the gods have shirked their duty, perhaps we could come to a mutually beneficial arrangement pertaining to both of our objectives. Indeed, I can offer you the source channel that you seek forthwith, as a gesture of good faith. Excellent. My master has found your kind to be an eternally pragmatic group. 
The issue at hand is a simple one. We have suffered a Black Ring incursion into our sacred groves. They surround a tree that sits at the heart of this fair isle. Once the Black Ring have been eliminated, I have been authorized to send you on your way with that which you pursue, the location of the Council of Seven. As for your initial reward, it seems in my excitement I misjudged you. You are more powerful than I had first assumed. Your ability to channel Source has sadly already passed the limits of my means. Although let it not be said that I ever shirked my duty. If I cannot gift you one boon, I shall gift you another. It would be such a shame to see this Source be simply left languishing in its current vessel after all. There is neither enigmatic lore nor magical jewel required to open the channels of Source. It is enough to seize it with sufficient force of will, to know that all creatures are nothing but Source and vain hope. You feel the pull of a far-off connection. You feel the dungeon, the red organic tendrils binding you. Your ears are filled with screams, and you're surprised to find they are your own. Cold pain shoots through your veins, sharp and quick, but cleansing. You can feel your body opening up, filling with the promise of power as your ability to channel source swells. Oh, what delectation. Why waste such power on flesh when it can be trapped in the pages of a tome? Now, tell me. Is there anything further in which you yearn to be enlightened? Why, the only thing you truly desire, or certainly the only thing you truly need, I will reveal unto you the location of the Council of Seven. My master has dealt with many of your ilk, small-minded creatures with a hunger for power, out to save themselves, or loved ones, or the world, some fantasy or another. But all are willing to strike a covenant if it means their success. One was even willing to give up the location of this council to earn my master's boon. How felicitous that you merely have to spill a little blood to earn the same. One may ask, one may inquire, but one should be eternally wary of what one demands. And one should heed that twicefold for information like this. There is power in names, power far, far in excess of your mortal limits. I'll not deliver that power unto him. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps you utter some truth. Surely his ear could not be eternally cocked. Very well. The master of the Void Woken is a creature older than any demon. My master will never speak his true name, but the Black Ring know him as the God King of... To arms! His savage minions have found us! is now safe.
Wretched spirit, you could have brought destruction on us all. Ah, at least the vital components have withstood the onslaught. Tell me, do you require further knowledge? My master's identity is of no practical consequence in this matter. You need concern yourself with nothing barring the truth that my master always honors his vows. Your smoldering half-demon pet can attest to that. I. She is the one that comes to me, helm in hand, in a sad attempt to beg and snivel her way out of previous and quite binding contracts. Alas, I am not at liberty to say more. My master values privacy above all else. He would not take it kindly if he discovered I had been indiscreet. Because it is expeditious to do so, my master would have this isle cleared as quickly as possible. The lizard looks about to make sure no one else can hear, leans in and whispers conspiratorially. And, if you are to become the new divine, I would much rather be an ally than a foe. After all, the power you wield will be as a great sword to my master's butter knife. There are legions that would follow you, myself included. Your power would be unfathomable. Assuming, of course, you take it for your own. Why, the only thing you truly desire, or certainly the only thing you truly need. I will reveal unto you the location of the Council of Seven. My master has dealt with many of your... But all... How felicitous that you merely have to spill a little blood to earn the same. I'm not here for you, mortal. Stay out of my way. As you reach down, the hound's flesh twists, forming sharp, jagged spikes. Maybe not. I relish the scenery and the lack of company. The statue is a striking sight, a sizzling blue totem on a blood-red isle. Even stranger, a shard of polished iron peeks from under the statue's base. There's something hidden beneath this massive sculpture. Even a triple-sized troll couldn't make the statue budge. Whatever the stone figure guards remains a mystery, at least for now. Your attention is appreciated, sir, but misplaced. You... <laughs> kill! Kill the bastard! Wear his skin! Dance in his hands! The elf's face, twisted in a grotesque rage, slowly calms. I beg your pardon. You need to speak to the advocate. The lizard by the table. He is waiting. Sweet thing, succulent thing. We are so pleased to see you, but not as pleased as him. 
You look into her eyes and see screams. You hear her gaze upon your body and taste her carnal, violent lust, metallic and sharp as a blade in your mouth. Go. Speak to the advocate. Make him happy. Bring him pleasure. on these stairs. Whatever words you carry with you, they are warty with futility. I know you for what you are. A mere mouthpiece of deception. It is of no use. The advocate knows the tree belongs to the ring. Oh, I can measure the vile depths of your prevarications by the very pulse of this bleeding forest. You lie. You lie. You lie. Steady as the heart, you lie. Ally. 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 You may be right, and blood does not lie. Very well. You're not one of the Advocate's men, but my warning still stands. Stand back. Not a foot on these stairs. Through fog we ride, through blood we wade in search of a name. A demon plots, but with his name we will bind him. This sore of bloody branches knows, but will not speak just yet. No matter. There is no remedy against patience and torture. He is the serpent that speaks with a thousand tongues except his own. He is the death of the soul with a smile and a flourish. Heed my second warning. Shun the advocate whose very sentence is a sentence.
were rather more astute than my initial verdict. A stirring display of violence. As per our terms, the location... The lizard leans in close, his rancid breath clogging your throat. As you look into the darkness of his eyes, you see an island. You see the winds that will carry you there. You see the way. Now, Godwoken, we both have what we sought, and thus all guarantees of safety are expired. You need not fear me, but this island hides more dangers than my claws. I recommend you go. But should I find you broken on the beach, I will shed no tears. It is something of a relic. A relic that has had its spirit defiled by the Black Ring. Now, I have work to do. This place must be cleansed, it must be healed. And you must surely know that your welcome is wearing thin. The spirit looks around with wild panic, clawing through its spectral mass with fevered nails. The demon feeds. The demon feeds from the ring. The demon protects. We must know what the demon protects. The demon has an advocate. The advocate kills. The demon has a secret. We must know the secret.
have kept your word, and we have kept ours. But our business is concluded. Do not linger. Your kind are not welcome. As you leave, you can't help but look at his eyes, desperate and pleading. He squeezes them shut and turns away. Godwoken, this tree is beyond sacred and is not for your mortal hands. I am doing what I can to heal it. You would be wise to do what you can and leave. your path. Simply choose a direction and ambulate until you strike the shore. Once there, well, perhaps you should keep walking on that course. Hold your breath and surely you will overcome the death fog's miasma. The spirit urgently passes a hand across the spines, whispering each tome's title as she comes across it. No, no, it isn't here. This is impossible. You, my brother, help me find it. There is little time. This is no time to feign ignorance, my friend. The Doctor's arrogance may end us all. He has released a dark presence upon us. It must never sing the taming. The hymnals must be destroyed. And yet, I see no sign one was ever here. You must help me look. Her hands fan furiously across the tomes like a pianist's upon the keys. You must be feverish. Though I wouldn't be surprised. 
Dr. Deva was surely ill to risk all that he's built here. Now be silent. Your questions vex me, and I have no time for idle chatter. She hushes you with an index finger held to your lips and continues her search. My source power draining at the merest touch. Tenebrium is truly a material of the void. I feel my source power draining at the merest touch. Tenebrium uh, is truly a material of the useful. void. The transparent artifact glimmers of its own accord, as if conducting light from another world, another plane of living. As your hand nears it, it shivers and speaks. You listen closely, but while you think you've heard similar utterances in the past, you cannot make sense of its words. Anan Folan Rever. Amadio Voluccio di Amederita Tamorius. It's a crystal blade, seemingly separated from its hilt. It's clearly of a kind with the object you recovered from the Surrey tomb. The object repeats its indecipherable twaddle. You can glean no more from it. Not just another oddity, it would seem. It spoke to me.
Just when I think this land holds no more still. At least this is an interesting variation. <sighs> Do what my people are going. It's all pointless. Twisted pain. It's everywhere. They didn't die quietly. 